Would you be willing to give me some guidance? I don't think it's up to me to educate you. Understood. He wants to talk about what's happening in other countries. Let's talk about what's happening in our country, Mr. Speaker. The Canada Committee 100 Society is led in Vancouver by Ding Guo, a journalist who is also an advisor to British Columbia Premier David Eby. Going into today's video, I thought the two main focal points would be, I don't know, complementary at best, but after taking a second look, I realized they are directly correlated. So the two things we're going to look at today is Matt Walsh's Am I Racist, which I happened to catch yesterday, and I do recommend it, as you will see in a moment why. And then we have to talk about David Eby. We talked about him yesterday, but I can't help to find it very bizarre that with the election not yet called in BC, he was reluctant to tweet anything after Kevin Vuong's revelation. But first, we are going to look at what happens when you fail to hear the old adage, don't hunt what you can't kill. So let's take a quick look at an exchange that transpired yesterday during question period. The Liberals have turned their backs on a generation of Canadians. When will they stop overtaxing housing so young Canadians can buy a home? Not a good question. The Honourable Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's interesting to me how often I see the Canadian Conservatives borrow their policy positions from white-wing populists in the United States. Yes, that might right. be where this particular member learned to advocate for programs that would cut affordable housing. Perhaps it was when he was chatting with his roommate at Yale Law School that he learned how to uh, oppose programs that were going to uh, provide birth control to Canadian women. Maybe it's his engagement in the United States that causes him to deal with the uh, policies to legalize assault sire firearms. Mr. Speaker, in this House, on this side of the House, we will advocate for policies that build more homes more quickly, not oppose them at every turn. The Honourable Member from Durham. It's no surprise that this Liberal Housing Minister continues to turn his back on a generation of Canadians because he's clearly not focused on his job. He wants to talk about what's happening in other countries. Let's talk about what's happening in our country, Mr. Speaker. That's right. The last time Conservatives were in power, houses cost half of what they cost right now. Currently today, under this Liberal government, nearly 39% of the total taxes on new homes in Ontario are going to politicians and bureaucrats in Ottawa. When will this government agree with Conservatives and end the federal JST on housing so young Canadians can... It seems the Liberals never learned their lesson. They're always pulling that U.S. style politics attack, and in this case, it backfired horribly. I mean, Sean Frazier really did come out looking like the bad guy in that situation, but they'll never learn and they'll keep pulling that same mistake. And now we are going to move into a review of Matt Walsh's Am I Racist? Um, this one was actually better than I thought. I have also watched his other documentary, What is a Woman? I didn't like that one as much. I kind of felt it was, um, I felt what is a woman was a little more biased. Like it was slanted more in, it was slanted more in Matt's favor for the argument he was trying to struck. Whereas this one I felt was more fair. I, I think he tried to throw more lifelines to the opposing camp. So what we're going to look at first is footage from a, I don't know, call it a speech. It's Robin DiAngelo, the, the author of White Fragility. She's just speaking into the camera. I think what you're about to see perfectly embodies the mumbo jumbo that powers this entire industry. I mean, it is nuts. At one point too, I'm going to bust this out. This is a book called Me and White Supremacy, a guided journal. Now you're probably asking yourself, John, what are you doing with this? I was just uh, visiting Barry one day and while I was at one of the uh, bookstores there, I noticed it was on clearance sale for $6.50. So I decided to deprive myself of a couple of coffee so I could buy this. And I put aside a couple of little footnotes that I'll read to you midway. I think you're gonna get a kick out of this. Now, let's see what Robin D'Angelo has to say about the hidden current of racism inside all of us. Yes, it's wonderful to have people of color in your life if you're white. Many, many, many people, white people, don't have people of color in close relationships. But that doesn't mean your life is free of racism. That doesn't mean you don't have a white experience or a white perspective. And it also doesn't mean that racism will not surface in your relationships with people of color. 
So if we go underneath and we look at the pillars that are supporting that kind of superficial ways that we're taught to think about racism, we see individualism as a very powerful prop or support, this idea that each of us is unique and outside of socialization. We see universalism, which is kind of the opposite of individualism. Individualism says, why can't we all be different? And universalism says, why can't we all be the same? This is a very popular ideology in religious or faith communities. And I'm not arguing that on a deep spiritual level, we're not all universally the same. But we don't live, if you will, in the spiritual realm. We live in the physical realm. And here in the physical realm, we have to ask ourselves, how does it function to say, we're, we all bleed under the skin? Well, it functions to take race off the table, to take power off the table, to deny that we have fundamentally different experiences because racism is real. You know what that just reminded me of? those old Jack Handy bits from Saturday Night Live. I know some younger viewers right now won't know what I'm talking about. The only difference being that those Jack Handy bits were comedy. He didn't take himself seriously, whereas she clearly takes herself way too seriously. And that brings us back to our special book here, Me and White Supremacy, a guided journal. As you'll notice for yourself when you eventually watch Am I Racist? There really is no winning with the social justice warriors. There's always a way for them to catch you. And I'm going to give you a demonstration of that right now by reading two short separate passages from this book. The title of this passage is You and Anti-Blackness Against Black Women. I'm sorry, I, I'm trying not to laugh when I read this. It's just so ridiculous. What is anti-blackness against black women? I'll get it straight. Black women are often painted with a broad monolithic brush stroke that categorizes them in particular stereotypes that rob them of their humanity unique individuality and worthiness. Okay, so let's zip along to our next section here. You and white saviorism. Are you seeing where this is going? What is white saviorism? Please let us know. The belief that people with white privilege who see themselves as superior in capability and intelligence have an obligation to save BIPOC from their supposed inferiority and helplessness. Well, with that said, let's rip into the outtakes from Am I Racist? Hi, Robin. Hi. Sorry. Is it possible for a white person to be not racist? I think in a given moment, we can be more or less racist. We're you talked about the problem of, uh, of over-smiling. <laughs> which really resonated with me. So sometimes smiling at a black person can, can be racist. It, it's a reminder, you know, those thousand daily cuts. It's a reminder of your position in relation to that other person, right? Because that person likely knows why I'm smiling at them. <laughs> so one thing you have to keep in mind the whole time you're watching this segment in uh, featuring Robin, he paid her 15 grand. So that's what his 15 grand bottom is this lady telling him that as a white person, for him to be smiling at a black person is somehow racist. Let's keep subjecting ourselves to this. Okay, so obviously I'm not gonna play like the whole movie for you guys. So to give you guys some context into the next clip that's coming up, Matt asked her to engage in a role play scenario in which she is a white coworker that offended a colored coworker, and now she has to figure out how to do the situation. So let's see how she deals with this. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit um, confused about how best to proceed. I, I can't, I can't deny that I am. Um, would you be willing to give me some guidance? I don't because think it's up to me to educate you. Understood. Is there anyone you trust uh, that I could talk to? Maybe another white person. Who's, who's understanding it. At this point, I think we should take separate hallways. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'd have to say like, one of the worst things about this is just thinking back to when I was younger and in my leftist days, at least I could say my leftist days were when I was a teenager. Unlike some people we see who are still leftists going right into their 50s. I used to know people like her. Thankfully, they didn't influence me to think like them. That would be pretty sad, but that is pathetic. 
And now this is probably the part that you've heard about. I'm sure that, you know, you must have caught mention of this at some point. Matt convinces Robin to pay one of his black employees reparations for the damage caused. I'm just going to roll it here. You draw your own conclusions. Well, on behalf of myself and my fellow white people, I apologize. Uh, it is not you. It is us. As long as I'm standing, I will do my best to challenge it. I want to pay you reparations right now. Um, will you accept? I, I, I won't turn it down. OK. I don't know. Um, this 20, well, this is all I have. Um, I, uh, um, I know that's not, that's not gonna, that doesn't make up for 400 years of oppression, but um, it's all that I have to give. Um, if that doesn't make you want to go see the documentary for yourself right now, I don't know what will. I just thought that was hilarious. And the look on Robin's face when the whole money thing comes into play is just absolutely hilarious. When the media followed up with her after MIA Racist was released, she of course went on the defensive saying that she had been played, she had been suckered, she attacked Matt Walsh every chance she had. It was really sad. But it just goes to show how little integrity these people have and Matt Walsh really did an ace job in showing you that this is an absolute scam. They are just preying on people's sensitivities and they're making bank on it. We're going to do more about this in a future video. But now what I want to do is move on to what we covered yesterday, which is the foreign interference that has been plaguing our politics for many, many years now. Since we already covered this yesterday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay a short snippet from yesterday's press as a reminder of what came out against BC Premier David Eby. I'm here today to highlight some of the names and entities covered in my updated book and to pose a question. Should other Canadian journalists be examining the openly available evidence surrounding these networks? Firstly, my book recounts reporting on a 2020 tape recording provided to me where Senator Yuen Pao Wu is heard in a 47-minute private briefing with the Canada Committee 100 Society. This group included Conservative Senator Victor O oh as an advisory member, along with an, individ an individual officially listed in a Chinese United Front Overseas Leaders Group. The Canada Committee 100 Society is led in Vancouver by Ding Guo, a journalist who is also an advisor to British Columbia Premier David Eby. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.